The school of the Holy Spirit is a gift God has put in my hand that I cannot explain. It's a school of encounters. Strange, incredible things happen in people's life. One third of it is never talked. Is, is, is less than one third of it is talked about. So this young woman has a story and a testimony. I want you to be very patient. Come up here. So that people can see you. And I want you to do yourself a favor. Listen, you're going to get many things from it. Above all, you have a good reason to get somebody you know who needs to be in the school of the Holy Spirit. Why that school is open till now for you. We are beginning next session, next month in another three weeks. Three weeks from now in next session. And we have just one week from now to do registration. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that this testimony is about the honor of God Amen. and the glory of God is over you. Amen. And that as you speak, these words of testimony shall be, shall open doors for the deliverance of so many. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will use this testimony to minister to everyone here according to their diverse needs Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive boldness. Amen. Are you ready? It's okay. All right, so... Please, family, attention. Go straight to, let us know your name. Will you tell us your age? I will be here to moderate you. Family, praise the Lord. <laughs> My name is Comfort, the daughter of the Most High God. <laughs> and I am here to testify to the glory of the Almighty, that he is the I am that I am. And it is only the presence and the spirit of the Most High God that is permitted to walk in this place as I begin in the name of Jesus. Amen. First of all, I will start with my birth. My birth was incredible. The Lord performed a lot of miracles. My mom faced a lot of attacks. But still the Lord prevailed and he kept me safe. And here I am today standing before you. A few months, a few years, not a few years, a year and a few months after my birth, I began to see things. I could see spirits, I could see ghosts. When the Bible says that the, the birds speak, I could hear them speak. That Solomon could understand the language of the animals. Yes, I did, I could hear them. When they say the walls have ears, the walls have doors, I could see them. When they say people are trapped with spirits, I could see every spirit trapping a person. So I would see the person, I will see the person's spirit, and whatever is attacking that person, I will still see, the, see it at the same time. People that are bound with chains, I would see them, they would be in their physical body, then I would also see their spirits, and then I would see the chains bounding them, keeping them in bondage. And then I would see them drag themselves along. They'll be dragging themselves along. I saw so many things. And that started when I was very little. We started from seeing dolls speak. I could see dolls speak, which is very, it is very important that when you buy a toy or a doll for your child, you pray over it and you pray for that child first. Because the enemy never stops trying, but he will always fail. I used to tell my mom, Mommy, see! Mommy, see! Mommy, see! But she never saw it with me. I would be like, oh, me see, it's talking, see, it's opening. And she never for one day saw it with me. And I felt bad, but I kept showing her I was a child. What did I really know? The nanny we had at the time, one and a half years old, she, she was very nice to me. She was beautiful. She was excellent. So each time my mom goes to work, I kept seeing those things. I saw them every time. So I would be telling her, Auntie C, Auntie C, Auntie C, and she wouldn't see. And I would tell her almost all through the day. So one day she told me, okay, one day I saw, the first day I ever saw an, a portal open. It was at the backyard of the house we were staying at at the time. It opened, it was like a portal. It opened into a different place entirely. It was, the place it opened to was different from what was actually behind the fence. So I told her, Auntie C, Auntie C, see that place has opened, it has opened, something is there, it has opened. And she said, what is it again? Okay, tell me that I will see. So I told her, Auntie, you will see. And she saw. And 
She was so startled, I can still remember very vividly how scared she was. But then she thought it was a mirage, so she decided, okay, let's go closer and see if this is fake, if this is my imagination. So when she walked to that part of the fence, she put her legs through and stepped in. And when she realized she could actually step in, she, she ran away immediately. <laughs> she left me there and she ran to our neighbor's house. And our neighbors at that time, I knew they were not good. So she ran there and she was crying. She was young, very young. She was crying and telling them, but she never told my mother, but she told them. So I remember they, they came to the house to ask me to tell them to see. And since I saw their re her reaction, I did not say anything. And she, she, she was so pissed. She was so angry with me. So each time my mom goes to work, she wouldn't do anything for me. She would leave me alone. I would cry, beg her to feed me, beg her to help me, like if I wet my dress. So I had to like, wait till my mom comes back before receiving any care. So because of that, I told myself, I will never tell anybody again that I've seen anything. So that was the beginning of the secrecy of my seeing things. So I never told my mom. I didn't tell my siblings. I didn't tell anybody. I saw them each and every time. Sometimes I'll get scared if I see something new. But as time went on, I got used to it. I thought, okay, this is how life is. And I began to be neutral to it. So I could keep a blank face and walk like I can't see it. At the point, I didn't know who was the physical person and who was the spiritual person again. I don't want to digress, so let me just use the point that I wrote down. So go to the next level of yes, okay. people, things harming people you talk to. Yes. So when I was in, in primary school, there's a school I was attending then before my school was changed. I could still see things, as always. And there was this particular girl that was in my class. And... She had three friends, so she would force those girls every break time, give me your food, she would command them, give me your food, and they would give her the food. And she would take it, and immediately, it's, let me say, 10 minutes or five minutes into break time, she would just open her eyes wide and run away, run out of the class immediately. And I wondered to myself, why was she always running? Where was she running to? And why was she always getting their food? So one day, when she, she started asking me to explain things for her, explain things for her in primary school, I asked her, why are you always getting their food? And for the first time, I saw her, her actual being. You know, normally, I, I, what I used to see about her was just her spirit. If you see her in real life, then you will never believe, you will never in your entire life believe that she's so evil. She was a gigantic wide spirit and she had tiny red eyes like it was like these images so that was what she was but i wasn't scared because i had seen something like that before so i just kept quiet and i watched her do evil she was extremely wicked each time she gets the food i when i saw that spirit i was like okay the next day when she got their food she would tap them when she gets the food after commanding them she'll get the food she'll tap them on their back and be like thank you thank you thank you but each time she taps them, something goes out of them into their plates. Something will go out of them into their plates and she'll put in her school bag. And at the appointed time, she will spring up and run. She, she did so much evil. And then she used to ask me, you can see me, right? You can see me, right? I was sent here. You can see me, right? And I'll never answer her because... And, and this was in primary school? Primary school. I was in primary school. And she said she was sending. Yes. Where was she taking this food to? Okay, she took it to this place. She called it. it a, well, I, I, I followed her one day, so she, she showed me the place. She called it Fantasy Park. So she told me this, she announced it, this is Fantasy Park. It was an abandoned playground. A child died here, so the school abandoned it. Okay, it is built on the tower of this. She mentioned, mentioned, mentioned things. I can't really remember all she mentioned, but I remember that in that place, it was like broken, it was like they had broken buildings and then poured out the broken the, um, blocks all over the place. So it was dusty. Then there was a place, just a wall, that was the only plastered wall and it was dark, and it was just a small space, very dark, filled with algae. So 
Each time she takes the food there, hands will come out of the wall, take the food. They are not interested in the food. It's the thing that enters the food that it will the, collect. The things that left the, the children, children into, into the, the food. food. Yes. That is what the hands will take. Yes, that is what the hands. So it would open the flask, take it out, and eat it. it would, its mouth would come out wide. It would eat those things. Just There were three girls, so it was just three thing, things. Then it would return the plates to her. Then she would pour the food into each other and sit down and eat. So, move, she did so much havoc. Move, move on to the one that you would... Yes. So, after some time, when she realized I could see her, because I, I started challenging her, I was seeing people dying. Those three girls, their parents died. Their caretakers died. Their business, the parents, they were in constant penury. And guess what? Her parents were the ones paying their school fees. So she was the char the, the organ, the foundation, making them the charity case. She, she killed people. Children. She would go to crutch, crutch classes. That's why it's very, when you send your children to school, don't just put them in the car, bye-bye, or you put them inside um, school buses. Pray and speak over your children because every child that was spoken over before leaving the house, words are spirits and they are alive and I saw them all. So if you say my child will not die, my child will not see evil, no evil person will be able to access you in the name of, it will work with the child. Those words will work with the children and she would come and she would see those spirits and she would leave that one. And they want to say, you're so beautiful, only that, you not leave your child. She would hold the child, if the child has prayerful prayer, the child may start crying but she's sucking the children's blood. And I would see it. And one day I challenged her because she kept doing it to babies in the crutch and the babies would be leaving, like people would remove their children from the crutch because their babies are getting sicker and leaner by the day. So I told her she should stop. That these ones are too small for her to attack. She now told me, if you tell anybody. I told, I told her, okay, I told her I'll report you to her class teacher. And she said, if you tell anybody, I cannot do anything to you. But those people, they will die. So I said, die for what? In my mind, I carried myself. I prepared my mind. I was going to tell this, tell this person, tell this person, tell this person. I remember telling my mom about the fantasy park, and no, she asked talk, me, Kasha. Talk about telling the teacher. Yes. So I prepared two days after, on a Wednesday, to tell my class teacher. So at the time, a teacher walked out of the class. It was a free time. I stood up to go and tell my class teacher. As she saw that I stood up, she just fell down from her desk. Wham! As she fell down, the teacher ran to come and help her. Hit his leg on a plastic chair. The teacher hit her, his, his leg, leg yes. on a plastic chair. On a chair. plastic chair. Plastic, small, light plastic chair. And helped her. After some time, the leg swelled up. It became infected. Plastic chair. They had to, he left the school, they had to, we heard that they amputated his leg, that was the first time I heard amputated, they amputated his leg, and a few weeks, it did not even reach two weeks later, he died. She now came to me, what did I tell you? Anybody you try to tell, this is a secret, you can't tell anybody my operation, I was sent here, anybody you try to tell, I will kill that, no, that person will die, she never mentioned that she was the one killing. So, if any time I attempted, if I felt too overwhelmed, and I attempted to tell somebody, I wouldn't tell the person, I just tried. Like, I would just test and let me just try. The person would either have accidents, the person, the person, if it is a child, if it's, no, it was not usually children, it's like, let me say, a teenager, the person's parents would die. If it is a, a teacher, anybody, they would just have accidents, Go face talk, so many problems. About, talk about you told your mother, your mother, and the effect of you talking to your mother about the things you were saying. That's, that's almost during the school of the Holy Spirit. Oh. Yes. So you had kept these things this long, you did not tell anybody no. until... Yes, I was tired of people dying, I was tired of people suffering. I just told myself, okay, at some point, I thought, okay, maybe this is my call to just see these things and keep quiet because I didn't want any more persons to die. And I felt so bad. It was so disturbing. I had dreams. I would see people, things that are not even my business. People, I would go to, I would see dreams of how people's covens. I would see everything that they are planning against this person. If I saw this person, this person spoke to me. Everything, unnecessary things that I did not need to see. I would see them. The effect of all these things is that you were not sleeping in the night. Uh, no, 
or I wasn't sleeping. I had no sleep. It, it, it was not, I, I don't know how to describe this to be believed because it, it, it sounds so unbelievable. I would lay down, it's a different world entirely. It's like a portal into a different, it's not the physical world. I don't know if it's the spiritual world, but you are not asleep, you are conscious. So I can consciously walk in there myself and walk back into the physical world. As time went on, I could walk in myself. If a portal opens, I can walk in myself. I don't need to stress, I don't need to do anything. It was that, I didn't sleep, I never slept. I would wake up, if that's waking up, feeling more tired than I had slept off. And talk was, about you walking by hospitals and yes, the effect of yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. I could hear screams of people. Each time I, it was such a tumultuous life. I would, if I passed by a hospital, I would hear screams, help me, help me, help me, help me, I'm dying, I'm dying, help me, help me, and I'll just be wondering. And there are so many voices, and I had learned over time never to speak to spirits. So I, I usually just kept silent. And then if a person dies, I would see the person's spirit leave the person's body, and then a voice would be like, you could have helped that person, but you decided to keep quiet. So every time I just felt guilty, I felt sad. I felt like if I told somebody, it's my fault because I'm the one. It's like, it used to come as a voice. You want to I, start killing people. I know there me. are many points. Let's, oh let's, there are two points that I want you to skip to. Skip to you passing by Ibom Hall. <laughs> and what do you used to see there? Please. Okay. This was yes. interesting. So I, I faced all of that. So one day, as my mom was driving us to school, I was in my secondary school, my mom was driving us to school. Usually, each time I pass by Ibum Hall, you know those carvings on the wall? If, if, if one is... Know, wait, you know the carvings on the wall in Ibum Hall? Okay. okay, continue. The ones carved in a dancing mode would be out dancing. The ones carved to, dan- to, um, to dig would be digging. The ones carved with calabashes, you know those ones holding, ca- they would be incanting and turning round and incanting. So that day I passed by expecting to see the usual scenario, but so, this time around they no, were wait, bound. Wait, wait, so you, each time you passed there to school, this was the normal thing? Yes, this was normal. I had every day, if each time I usually pass there to go to my school, so each time I pass there, I would just see them dancing. I had gotten so used to it. And you didn't tell your mom? No, I did not. <laughs> okay. I don't want to start to anybody. I didn't tell anybody a lot of things. Okay, continue. Then one day. So that day, for the first time, I passed by. I turned to look again, as I always did. It's better than seeing people's spirits. So I turned to look, and they were bound in chains. So I was shocked. I was like, this dancing person is not dancing today. What's going on? And I looked at the rest of them, and they were all chained. And I was like, wow. I was so excited. I was like, wow, these things are chained. And I looked, I decided to then look at the building because I had never paid attention to the building. So I decided to look at the building and the roof of the building was on fire. So I was like, wow, this is a marvelous sight. If the usual has been terminated and something new has come, this is wonderful. So I looked at it and God told me, I used to hear God a lot. He helped me. He He was with me all through. He said, I am sending you there. My mom had already driven past, like, by that time. So I was like, you're sending me there. Okay, I was so excited. So, the next time we passed in the morning, the next day, I really looked again to be sure, like, I started praying. He told me, okay, he told me, I'm sending you there, pray. That was three years before I came to Grace Family. So, I prayed about it because I knew that if I, okay, the, the next time I checked, I was really eager to see what was going on there, why people were trooping there, why the roof was on fire, why the images were suddenly bound in chains. So I looked at the signpost for the first time to see the name. So when I saw the president's name, I wrote it down and I was praying with it because I can't go and tell my mom, mommy, God sent me. If God does not tell her, she's not doing it. There's nothing that she would do about it. So... That is what happened. So I started praying about it, and the attacks came more. When I began to pray about it, the attacks came more and more and more and more and more. So one day, my mom just woke up on a Sunday morning very early, 
and woke us up and said, stand up, stand up. We're going to Father's church. And I was like, okay, wow. I stood up. We started preparing. By that time, they had moved from Ibom Hall. So we didn't even know where Goshen was. But my mom said that the mighty angel that told her when, I was, when, they wanted to, when she was about to birth me, that he sh actually he should go to, she should go to a particular doctor and give birth and come back. I came to her and told her, stand up, you are going to Goshen. So she just packed her things, just the same way she did on the day of my birth. And we started driving down to Goshen. A lot of things happened on the road, but to the glory of God, we arrived. And that was the first turning point of my life. The devil attacked the moor. He brought his forces in full. They would come to threaten me. Where do you think you are going? Wait, you want to expose us to the world? How dare you? Did we ask you to? Why did you come to this? Why? We tried to kill you. Why are you here? I was so, it was so bad. So the first day we ever came to this church, we came to Goshen, we were teaching on priesthood. That was the lesson of the day. So he said, yes. Okay, before we go there, talk about each time your mother said it would take you to a, a minister to deliver you that for delivery. That, that was after you came here? Yes. Oh, continue. So, it was on priesthood. So after that, my mom decided, okay, he said, you can be the priest to your family. You don't always need to come to church. And I love how he made us such independent Christians. Because when I came here, that is not what I expected at all. But I grew, and I am so grateful to God for growth. So one day, my mom was praying with us in the house, and there was a lot of... She decided to anoint us, as she always does. But that particular day was so different. There was a lot of manifestations, so many things. And then I had to tell her everything. So... <laughs> I told her, not precisely everything, I told her some things. She found out some things in pastor's office, but I told her some things. And then she started praying about it. And she was so scared. I don't know if to say she was scared. I don't want to speak for her. She was not scared in Jesus' name. She was, <laughs> she was not happy about it. So she would come if she was so worried. Because how can my child be seeing things every time? And she has not told me. She said, yes, you are keeping a straight face since that time. And I was just quiet and silent. I was like, I'm already used to this. There's nothing wrong with me. Can you calm down? But she wasn't calm. So each time she thought of taking me to a man of God, she, she can come to me and she'd be like, okay, I went online. I saw this or I've heard about this. What do you think? And I'll just be like, no. I never believed there was anything wrong with me. God knows. I told her there's nothing wrong with me, we are not going there. She said, why? So that night, each night, each night a pastor comes up. She brings up a man of God or we find out about a man of God. That night I would see everything about that man of God. All through. There was one she talked about and in the night I saw how he dedicated himself to the sea, the marine demons. I saw his operations that night. There was another pastor that that night I slept off and I walked into his church. I had never been to his church. But when I browsed the church, because each time I wake up, I'll browse to see whether this thing I'm seeing is real or if it's an imagination. And it was exactly the same altar, exactly the same. He opened a part of the altar and removed the coffin and there was a rotting skeleton inside. So that was the person he killed to start the foundation of the church. So he would do incantations, he did incantations, then they would kill the always fresh female dead bodies he would sleep with. Then after that, he would now stand and do the spirits would align themselves around the altar and start throwing their hands at him, throwing their hands at him, and he would receive power, like, I don't need to call that power. So on, he would reserve it, he would hold himself like this. I slept that, I overslept that night so that I could see the morning of the church. On service that morning, immediately he entered. The first thing he did was to release those evil spirits to people. So he's like, wow, and everybody in that side falls down. Vroom, 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 and wow, this side falls down. Vroom, 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 vroom. But falling down is not a sign of deliverance. No, no. Let, let's, it's not. let's move on then to you coming to Grace Family, your mom. Yes. Now, so, before she continues, please, let me just add something here. The fear that each time they say they will meet a man of God, the fear was always that either that man of God will die 
or something wrong. So when they say they will come to Grace Family, she prayed a lot that I will not die. Yes. Because oh that God. She I was so prayed. Sure. I went wait, God told wait. Me. But it was not me she talked to. She talked to the first lady. So the first lady called me in the office. She said, please, there is, there is a young lady or a family sitting here. What they are talking about, you are the one who should hear. <laughs> That was the first time I think the mom was hearing certain things for the first time. And so I told the first lady, calm down, I don't have time to see anybody. She said, no, Re, you must see this person now, now, now. So forced her away and brought her. And she sat in my office. She was so disappointed. I think, I don't know, if your, is your mom here today? Mommy is here? Mommy, hi, where are you? And the sister. Okay, that's the mom there. Where is the sister? <laughs> Because I want to talk about it because the scary life the mom and the sister had lived and the fact that I was not so serious about this thing they were talking about, they almost fainted. It's like they expected me to start doing something. I said, no, come to the school of the Holy Spirit. When you come there, the mom said, nobody is permitted to touch her that I'm the only qualified person. The Holy Spirit had told her a few things about me. And it turns out the Holy Spirit, when they said they were coming here, she also saw, and she was told certain things about me. She would, I'm not sure she would like to tell you that one. But it was, I think it's not a scary thing. Is that a scary thing? Okay. All right. So otherwise, she would not come. But she was said, she, what she was told is a confirmation of what Mrs. Sam Sam had been told about me by somebody who ordained me, but that she never knew and never met. That's the same thing she was told anyway. But in the school of the Holy Spirit, they were so disappointed that I treated her so with no importance that they needed me to start doing something. Say no. So one day ministers were praying and she fell. Oh, it was like everybody will die. Because as at that time, I didn't know why the mother was so worried because her case had killed many people. So they were expecting that being other ministers praying and laying hands on her, no, did anybody lay hands on you? No, it's just that the anointing came upon her and she fell. And those who came to pray for her, it was like they would all die. So when they now came to my office, the following day, I was so angry. I said, whatever demon is inside of you, it's so insignificant to get my attention. And that, I don't need to touch you. And that all those ministers who say she shouldn't touch you, they walk under my delegated authority. They share the rank that I share. And nothing can touch them. That was like a new thing to them. But fast forward, can we now come to the end of it? Those other details okay. will be for me. Okay. Now let's come to the part. Which other part is interesting for people to know? Otherwise, we come to the part of your deliverance. Okay. And the new life. She actually, she actually, she's studying medicine now, right? <laughs> she's studying medicine now. Very wonderful, very wonderful. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Okay. Or any other very important thing you want to mention before we come to the deliverance part of it? Yes. Okay. Okay, so the day I met the first lady that night, God told me, go. Because they said it was very hard to see Father. So he said, go. The gatekeeper will let you in. And I did not know who it was or what it was about. But I know I, that I came with my mom to the fireplace. And after the fireplace, we started going. So we're discuss they were discuss I and she and my sister were discussing the protocols. And I didn't say anything. So sometimes they would be like, maybe God can actually push us in. So when we walked in, I remember feeling fire, very serious and hot, coming towards me. But I did not know who it was or what it was. But I felt like it was, the place was shaking, shaking, only for me to see the first lady. And that was the first time I was seeing her up close. And she was like, come into my office and see me. And I was so happy and shocked. So when Father talked about First Lady being the gatekeeper, I was so happy because it was a confirmation. Coming to the school of the Holy Spirit, which you should apply and also attend, I, 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 my life was turned around. You know, he said, you will be turned into a new person. I did not know what it meant. I remember on the graduation day, I saw excited students and I did not know what they want, what they had, what they knew that I did not. But going to the school of the Holy Spirit taught me a lot. It showed me that I had the right to my sleep. 
Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 talks about us having dominion. Don't preach. That Talk is our place. <laughs> so it, it made me understand that I had, and because of that, because of those revelations, I prayed. My prayer life caught on fire. I prayed. Talk about your deliverance. Yes. As I prayed, my deliverance usually came during my prayer time, my Judah time, my covenant time, and you well were using our prayer stick. That was when I had encounters. I had already had, but those particular encounters were so strange. Several, they would, they would be like the head of the sea of this will come. How dare you? And I would just speak a word. Speak the word of God and pray. And it would be gone. Because I did not have the attention of any minister. So I knew that I had to be independent. I had to stand. I had to stand in God. I love that he pointed me to God. Coming to the, Holy, to the school of the Holy Spirit will give you the guidance of the okay, Holy Spirit. Okay, so by the time you are delivered, just, just let's summarize around yes. the deliverance. So I faced a lot of encounters. My, parents, my mom and my siblings, after they knew, they faced so much attack. Several attacks on different, so serious, so bad, so terrible, but God prevailed. I don't know how or when, I just knew things were living little by little. Each and every week, something different. For each and every week. Every time you came, that week, something, something would, leave would you. go. Something if would every go. week I came, something would go. Every week I came, something would go. Something would come in on that Saturday night to challenge, and then it would die, and then it would run away. So every week, something would go. Every week, something would go. And one time that I had a very serious, terrible, it was like, it was so bad. After the Rising Stars Assembly, I was alone in the class. I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. My mom was so worried. So went to see father, and he spoke a word. He said... Oh, you came to my office that yes. day? Yeah. No, not that day. After. No, no. Okay, after that day. Yes. A Monday after the fireplace. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we went there, and he spoke a word. He said, those things, they will never return. They go. I can't remember the exact words, but I remember that never return was there. Go was there. And I remember that every time those voices sounded, I would hear Father's statement. Every time those voices sounded, each time I passed a hospital or a mortuary, and they start, Ooh, I'll just hear they will never return and everything will be silent. So I just thank God because he silenced the spirits for my sake. No, wait. No, before oh you God. get there, Hallelujah. don't do ministration. Wait. No, wait, wait, wait. Listen. Now, lastly is that you could go to bed. Yes, one day I just woke up and I had slept. For the first time you had slept? For the first time in my entire life, I woke up and I had slept. I didn't feel tired. I didn't feel stressed. You didn't see anything? I did not see anything. I just, my mom walked in and I just saw my mother. I looked at the bed, I just saw my siblings. I didn't hear any voices. No door was on the wall. No, no, no tree had mouth or ears. No, but no, no ants was talking. Everything was just silent and there was so much peace. And I told my mom, mom, I feel so much peace. And I told my sister, I told her, I slept. <laughs> I know she said everybody sleeps, but she did not understand. I was the only one who understood. I had, I had never, I had never slept for a single day. Never. But that day, I slept. And from that day on, I have had, I just, you know when you sleep and you wake up, you just know, I slept. Like I woke up, I would wake up confidently and during morning prayers, my first things even were like, God, thank you because I slept. You because I slept. If you do not, ah, God. he said he giveth sleep to those he loves. Okay. But thank you, Jesus. Okay. First of all, thank you for giving time for this testimony. Um, I don't know. Am I permitted to let them know how old you are? Shut up. <laughs> now use your mouth to tell them how old are you. Do. Okay, I am 17. Okay. So well, listen, she said, I don't know, the mom is here to confirm. She started speaking at a very early age. 
Um, mommy, will you want to confirm one or two things? Please, I'm sorry. She spoke very early. And so she started seeing these things between the ages, the age of one and one and a half. This is the life she had always lived. And for about 16 years plus, the mother did not know her. The sibling did not know who she was. She knew people were dying in all these cases, but no, she could not tell anybody. Because of the days she swore after the nanny was startled and abandoned her. And the mother did not know that her daughter was abandoned. That a one year plus daughter was not taken care of by the nanny. Because of the strange, so for the nanny she was carrying a spirit and could not care for the spirit. The strange thing about her deliverance is, is still very funny. And I'm sure the first lady is watching. We know this is three differently. The whole big show about nobody should touch this because the mother was afraid that, you know, I am the only one because the mother was told, go, that I have the mother. I don't know if you can talk about the, the three things she was told that I will, that will qualify for a deliverance. I think one of it is resilience, rank. And what again? I think those two things. Uh, and what? Hierarchy. Okay. Resilience. Rank and so I think actually when she came, I showed those things without knowing. That I treated her like there was nothing inside all this nonsense. And I told the mother, how dare you feel that I have to give attention to a demon? I have to tell the mother, do you know what, what, who I represent? That I have to change my rule. I have to change my arrangement to face one little demon. I didn't even know it was a thing that had denied her sleep sleep for 16 years plus. plus. And she saw, and the little that the mother could hear, the mother almost fainted. And all the attacks in the family. And I remember one day, the elder sister, who is always coming, the day I talked about it like it was not a serious thing. And she talked about how she will not get admission. And by the way, there is this this spirit girl she used to see physically that lived in the spirit world. That any school she goes to, she will meet the person. Oh, is that same girl? girl. She came from Any school she will go to, that girl will be there. Even in you, you, she met the girl there. Yes, she's doing the same things. But God, God will judge the ones that are coming to do evil. Yes, he will. Okay, the mother... (laughs) No. The mother, do you want to hear the mother a little? Okay, just a little, just a little, just a little. I would like her to talk about the girl a little. A little, you want her to talk about the girl a little? Yeah, 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 people will learn. Okay, you want to talk about the girl a little? She had told me a few things about the girl. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, I think we don't really have time. Let's. Okay. Okay, you want to hear? Let's. She was a terror to children, and she would get close. She would get close to pupils, get close to students. She came to my. She when my mom changed my school, when I told her about the fan. And when she, my mom heard the fantasy, fantasy park does not exist. My mom and I told her she now believed, and I told her that's the girl that took me there. So she believed and changed my school. So when I changed school, the first day I started the school. She sent a boy, one of my classmates. He, he came, he looked hypnotized. And he told me, he mentioned her name, said, I should tell you that she's coming for you. I was like, okay. So after that, one, two weeks later, I saw her at the head teacher's office coming to write entrance exam. <laughs> and I screamed, I was going towards the talk shop and I screamed that I told her, you will never come to this school. You will never come to this school. And her mother was so startled. Mother held her, I was like, ah, ah, Jesus, what kind of thing is this? Small children talking like this. And the girl was so angry and furious. So she left. And she never came to that school. But as I moved to secondary school, two weeks later again, she appeared. She landed and then she saw me. It was during break time. She likes our pressure during break time. She saw me and then she smiled. And I smiled at her. And I walked to her. 
acted like nothing had ever happened, took, took her around, showed her around the school, and then at the stairway, the highest point of the school, she told me, I told you I'll come for you, Abby. Here I am. And I told her, I took you around the school to show you that God owns everywhere. If you are coming for me, you will die. So she was so startled, and then she ran away. She just picked herself and ran away. And when again. you went to you, you, you saw her again. I saw her again. <laughs> But this time around, you know, when I wanted to write jam, she sent someone again to tell me, I am coming to your department. Wait for me. To your department? Yes. And I told her, you will never come to my department. To the glory of God, she is not in my department. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's... This looks like a dream, right? Like a movie. But this is a mother to be a witness. She has a sister, an immediate elder sister, that um, she was so angry with me the day I felt like there was nothing wrong. And then she felt like she would die because there would be no admission. But God opened the door, she has admission. I think the mother has some stories about her birth. Her birth was very extraordinary. And um, I'm not sure we have time for that, so maybe for another time. Let's take, let's take microphone. <laughs> oh, you have time? Okay. <laughs> Please pray for your children before you let them go to school. Wait, pray over the food wait, you wait, cook. Wait, wait, wait. Pray. Let, I may let, not talk wait, after let that your now. mom. You know, you are not going yet. Your mom, let your mom. Mommy, will you say just few things? Please, not much. Few things about the circumstance of our birth. Because I want to use that to tell you why I needed you to hear this testimony. Just briefly. Uh, good afternoon, family. Don't preach, just talk about it, okay. please. I uh, will just talk a little briefly about the circumstances that led to our uh, birth. Um, about that time, I found myself in a particular church. I was taken to that church by my husband. And um, when the pregnancy got to three months, one of the leaders of the church, a woman, very devoted woman, I don't know, um, I think she was a nurse. She decided to organize an um, antenatal for pregnant women. And we were about 30, so I started attending. But along the line, I noticed some women crying the following day. I didn't really understand. And some walked up to her and said, Auntie, I bled, or I'm bleeding. Ah. And some of them were women that their pregnancy had advanced. So I left that first day. The second week, the same thing happened to me. I started bleeding. By the time I got to the house, it was, it was so serious. And I'm like, ah, I heard women talking about this. Why is it happening to me? So I bled till the following morning. And I made up my mind I wasn't going back there again. So I stayed in my house and prayed. I, from time to time, I called the pastor. Only on Sunday, I go to church on Sunday. But the antenatal, I never went back. So nobody could really know if I was pregnant or not among them. But what I noticed is that by the time I gave birth to her, every woman out of the 30 of us, all of them were flat. They had lost the baby, and it was the same process. So months passed. So you can notice the corruption. That was, that was the connection. Now the point is that God was sending a gift. And in a, almost, when we talk about ministries and churches, the enemy plants agents in strategic places that will make contacts with the plan of God. Now, I just want to, I'm using this to summarize why I had a command that this testimony will be the only testimony today. I took time to pray. And I had put her through a prayer process. And I told her, until you have peace, I will not let you talk. And so she has confirmed to me severally, I have peace. I am ready to talk. Now, I have never really listened to the mom. Because I didn't give the mom opportunity. The mom will come with very... The day she tried testifying, they shut her down. I don't know whether I'm the one who shut her down. In the school of the Holy Spirit. Because the story is so fantastic. But the point is this. She had contacts with the world of darkness that corrupted. Now, this will also help you to see 
Many people who in ministry see, but they don't see through God. Because what was done was the corruption of gift. So that that could become a ministry and a minister. And what that will also mean is that she will become a contact to transfer that. I don't know, am I communicating? Yes, this is what is happening. I'm not saying in every church and in every ministry. This is the, the latest attack of Satan in the church. Doing work, singing, and all sorts of solutions. Today, I'm so blessed that God arrested you to sit down to hear. Now, the, the beautiful thing about the testimony of this girl is that she was delivered. I didn't have to lay hands on her. The mother was told, go. That man has repeat what you were told. Mama, repeat to them what you were told. Okay, she says she wants to learn. Okay, I'm sorry, learn. Will you let her learn? Praise the Lord. Learn. So, as the pregnancy progressed, I noticed that there were forces that were ready. In fact, I wasn't even sure I would survive. Because you see a situation where your eyes are open into the spiritual. And you can see your own death played for you like a television. And then sometimes in the night, I would see this mighty man. I didn't really understand who he was. He will come with me. Come with me and my spirit leaves my body. And I get into a gathering. People are there, plenty of people, sometimes under big trees. Pots lined up. And the man will say, do you know who those pots are for? You, but it won't happen. Shout! Earthquake of the Lord! Hailstones of the Lord! And I will shout. And hailstones will drop. And when they drop, anybody that did not run fast enough there, know that you are gone. So if I enter the street the next day, I will... Move, move on to our beds. Okay. And the people, definitely that person will die. And I will actually see the Move on to the birth. So it progressed. And then um, at the eighth month, my water broke and I went to the hospital. And you know what happens when it happens like that, the baby will die. And as soon as I got there, the false labor stopped. So I stayed there, nothing happened. And then uh, that night, that same repetition came. That television showing me what will happen, induced labor and death. So I packed my things and ran back to the house. And I kept bleeding water for one month plus. I was very weak. I couldn't stand up. I think maybe people were thinking I would die, but maybe God did not want me to die. So when it got to almost two months, I would still feel something in my stomach because I thought the baby was gone. And I was bleeding. I'm bleeding water, nothing more. So, one day, I was at a crossroad. And that same mighty man came. He said, if you sleep here tonight in this condition, you are gone. Pack your things. I'm taking you to a city. You are going to meet a doctor there. He mentioned the name of the doctor. A man I had met once in my lifetime. Wherever your husband is, I'm going to bring him right now. So I got up. The weakness was gone. At this point, I was always lying down because there was no strength in me again. But as soon as I woke up, I became myself again. Nothing. I packed my baby's things. Everything I needed to do, I did. And I heard a knock on the door. And I just told my husband, down, take me to so, 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 so place. He didn't argue. So we walked into the car. I packed my things. And we traveled. I got there by 5.30. As soon as I stepped into the staircase of the man, the doctor, Kai, labor started. People rushed. I fell on the ground. I couldn't stand up again because I would have delivered by that staircase. So people rushed me. Was he resided in the hospital. So people gathered and lift me up. By the time they got to the OPD, I was struggling. Leave me, leave me, leave me, leave me. So the baby, the baby came out. came out. Yeah. Just in the open place by the OPD. So within 30 minutes, 
Everything was done. The doctor picked up the baby. He was the one that took the baby for cleaning. While the nurses were preparing where I would stay in the hospital, he came back, no. Uh, Madam, boy in for me, go back. So within 30 minutes, the baby was handed back to me and I was asked to depart. It was weird, strange. A woman that just put to bed and you are sending her away. And um, no, it was 2007, early 2007, and babies were being stolen in the hospital. So I don't know, but that was exactly what happened. So that's the circumstance of our birth. Yes, that was the circumstance. Okay, what else so do you want to learn? So what happened now was that by the time she started growing, nine months she could talk. Nine months. Yeah. She talked very early. She was very exceptional. And she spoke with an accent, kind of British, which I didn't really know how to place it. So, and uh, she was a very fine girl. Mommy, see, mommy, see. I'm not seeing. So I didn't really understand what she meant. And what I could do was stop her from watching cartoons because she would describe things on the wall. Oh, have you seen this? You are playing a cartoon and she already knows what they look like. So I think I couldn't really place it. So every other thing that happened, she didn't tell me. But she told me the story of the girl. The story of the girl is very critical. And why is it critical? Because if that girl had succeeded, I wouldn't have been here. Maybe all my children would not have been alive. The same thing that happened to other families. I don't really know why she sent after her. So I'm believing God who has made this revelation that her end has come. Mm -hmm. Because right now, the same structure of having three friends in the primary school, wherever she goes, she starts with three girls. Gradually, the mother, the father will die. Either their house will catch fire, and then eventually, Oh, you didn't say those three girls are dead. They are equally dead okay, now. Okay, the three girls in, that were in the primary school then, they are dead. Their whole family, everything wiped out. Cool. So, and it's the same thing that is happening now. She has started with another three girls. And who knows how they will end? So it's One good for down. mothers and fathers to pray. Okay. Um, about this, Father. Mm, let me just stand there. So I finish, want. finish. Praise the Lord. Please. Uh, this is not a gossip. We are not accusing. We are just saying every parent should pray and intercede for every other person. Because we come into the world primarily for one purpose. Either to worship God or you are lured into serving Satan. So you pray for your children. You pray for their friends. We are not now, Do you remember that I demand that Lord. I anoint your children? Do you remember that? <laughs> Most parents don't bring their children for anointing. The feel is useless. The feel is unnecessary. God commanded me that when I was in Abuja and I started it here. I will have done that yesterday when the Holy Spirit told me, tell parents to bring their children. I will ask God to forgive me. I didn't announce it. Because I didn't want too much trouble. I was already tired. And I did not know how many parents would bring. But by the grace of God, April will return to anointing our children monthly. Will parents bring their children? <laughs> Okay, we'll see. Madam, I think any other thing you want yes. to say? Last yes. one, just last one. One sec, okay. one minute. I want to get to the point where I came to Goshen. And because of my previous experience, I'm not so conversant with going to new churches. Um, but God wanted to deliver my daughter because there were so many things I later learned that she never told me. Scary things. So, uh, one day I was sleeping, and um, I saw this mighty man again, and he said, I'm sending you somewhere with her. And I said, this is the man that saved my life. I'm going to be so obedient. And he said, I'm sending you to my priest. And he mentioned Father's name. 
And I'm like, why? And because uh, I still remember there was a time my daughter pressurized me that she wanted to go to Ibom Hall. Okay. And, and she, I did, didn't really... she did not tell you what she saw in Ibom Hall. No, she did not tell and me. My no, now you know. Me. Please, let me interject. She was shown a few things about Ibom Hall. And she almost stopped coming to Ibom Hall. You know, when we used to tell, stay in Ibom Hall, I told you people I was there on a mission. How many people can remember? I'm sure you thought I was stupid. I told you I was sent there on a mission. I told you it was for the reason of this state. That Ibom Hall represents all the deities of Akwa Ibom State. By that time, I didn't know a little girl was saying, dancing things. That you see an artwork, but they are real works. But I will tell you people, I used to tell you experience we had there, we prayed there for almost 30 days before we moved in. I told you one of the things that happened. Let's not talk about those ones. It's just that sometimes God confirms things to you so that when next I talk again, you will not think I want to, I want to impress you. Every time I would tell you I came here for a mission, I came here for a purpose, and at the point that we, we said we should leave, I said, no, the day the one who sent me to come will ask me to leave, I will leave. Because there was a time so much pressure, and nobody will me, I'm sure we will hear this. Father, it's time to leave. Father, Father, Tony, the people were seeing revelation, it's time to leave. I said I was asked, that hot, please look outside, that little hot there. It's the only wind has not brought down that place. Wind brought down a, a palm tree. Before we went to Oron, it was meant to kill and destroy. Yeah. People didn't know fell on the toilet of the women at a na about 9 p.m. But that same wind could not take that thing down. Why? I have not been told by God what to do. That was where I heard. Go to Ibum Hall. That was it. So I was there on a mission, I was sent, go to Ibom Hall. Udo Emmanuel, His Excellency at that time, gave me free. But I said, I will not preach on a free place. I paid two million naira to our people to enter there. So hearing something like this from a young girl who at that time, we never knew I would ever connect. And now you heard this. And the mother testifying, she used to pester her, let's go to Ibom Hall. But she did not know why they needed to go to Ibom Hall. Okay, learn, madam, learn. Okay, so she kept pestering me and I decided to seek the consent Use of the my husband. Use the microphone like this. Oh, oh, praise the Lord. And I decided to seek the consent of my husband and he didn't buy the idea, so it was cancelled. So fast forward back to when I finally came. Um, you were saying, I'm sending you to my priest. Complete yeah, hour. that's where I am now. I'm sending you to my priest. And I tried to find out who the priest was. And when the name was mentioned, and somehow I just have to be frank, it was a little bit controversial in my mind um, from, where I'm, from where I am coming from. So That the church she used to worship him means it was a controversy for somebody from that church to come to somebody like me. Like many of you here. Continue. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Continue. So, I said, ah, okay. So what, why? Why must I go there? Because at that time, I didn't really know the involvement of my daughter in the realm of the spirit. I was content with praying for myself and... I didn't really see the need. But the man said, I am sending you there because of his ranking in the realm of the spirit, because of his resilience, because of the hierarchy in the spiritual. Those were the three main facts that he talked about. And as time goes on, you will learn more. Okay. So because of that, I was convinced. I said, okay, let me go and see how he's ranked. So. (laughs) 
Okay, okay. Praise the Lord. Madam, you see what? No, no. The others are for me. Barry, just one second. Okay. Madam Doga will pray for you. Is your daughter here? Your other daughter. Please thank you for your patience. Give me the I next next 30 seconds we are done. I want to specially appreciate the first lady. I wish she would, was here, but I understand. I am so grateful to you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you for being a gatekeeper. May the Lord bless you for being fire. May the Lord bless you for keeping the fire. May the Lord bless you for blessing our Father here in the church. May the Lord bless you and give you all that you desire. And everything that you have thought up in your heart to get, may you get in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you never go out of the line. Amen. In Jesus' name. Pick up phones for School of the Holy Spirit. It's a school of encounters, extraordinary deliverance. Healing, transformation above all. Turning you into what God says you are. We are ready to start in April. You have the next one week to pick up forms and share it with your daughters or sons from the age of 10 to 16 or to 17. Talk to husbands who are having problems in marriage, wives who are having problems in marriage. A lot of things are happening in people's lives that we don't have time to talk about. Please, church, rise. Thank you so much for being patient. May God reward you for honoring his name and honoring my words in the name of Jesus. Can you kneel down and face, just kneel down and face him. I just want you to lift up your right hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. This family made themselves available to honor your name in this testimony so that others can learn and watch over their homes and their families and stop the evil one from destroying more. Lord, be their security. Be their shelter. Change their address forever. Whoever looks for them, let the person meet you. Whoever seeks them, let the person find you. Whoever wants to touch them, let the person touch you. And let that be the end. As for this young one, comfort. Say it with me. As for this young girl, comfort. Whatever is the reason the enemy wanted to destroy her from the womb. And whatever is the reason the enemy has been after her for more than 16 years. Let that reason bless the ends of the earth. And let that reason never be corrupted. And let every person like comfort anywhere find salvation. And let every parent who has a child like comfort find help. We use comfort to speak concerning all our children. Lord, preserve our children from harm. Preserve our homes from harm. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer. Preserve our homes from harm. Preserve our children, our marriages, our households. Please preserve. Please preserve. Please preserve. Please preserve. Please preserve. Please preserve. In the name of Jesus Christ.